Welcome back to another episode of Teeth and Turbos. I'm bringing totally different content today. I'm ripping a 2017 42 foot yellowfin from Venice to Naples. It's gonna be about a 70 mile run. All right, I know y'all have been loving the Sam content, and so am I. I've been learning a lot, and I'm sure y'all have too. So I'm gonna do a question and answer video with him. So in the comments below, leave the questions y'all have for Sam so that I can ask him some detailed and off-the-wall questions that I can't think of off the top of my head. If y'all don't mind hitting the subscribe button before you watch this video, it really appreciated. Sam and I were talking yesterday, and he said, oh, let's grow this thing, let's grow this thing. And I responded, I, I don't really care about the growth as much as I want to share with people and their families good, clean content that's educational and it's entertaining to watch. So help us out, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to the boating action. What's up y'all, bringing you a little bit of different content today. I am on a 2017 42 foot yellowfin with triple Yamaha 350s. And we're gonna be taking this thing from Venice down to Naples. Now that's about an 80 mile run. I'm the captain of the boat today. I'm riding along with Luke, who's my fiance's brother, and Monica, my fiance's sister. And we're meeting up with their family for a little bit of a New Year's celebration down there. All right, there's our final $727 for 225 gallons of fuel. That one hurts the bank, but you know, it's the price of boating. This is stuff I love to do. I love to be on the water and I love to boat. I'm using my Garmin watch to track my time and my speed. So far we've been on the, on the water for about an hour, but that's literally just to get to the fuel dock and fuel up. And then we're gonna head out to the Gulf side and take the Gulf all the way down. You can take the intercoastal, but the Gulf's gonna be a little bit smoother sailing. No, no wake zones and we can stay up on planing. Let me show you around the boat. So it's got the front row here, rear facing seats. Triple Yamaha uh, 350s, which are V8s, and a live well here, storage, and we have the two big Simrad screens going on right now. We're fueling up. I'll show you guys where we're at with that. It's quite a bit of fuel. We're going to be putting in this thing to run down there. We're almost ready to leave the dock, and yeah, pretty built, well built machine. These elephants are great for family and fishing. Versatile on the west coast of Florida. We really like them and we've used them for a while. Here's a view of what it looks like down in the cabin. Quite a bit of it on the space, actually. We have a full shower and toilet in there and enough for one to two people to sleep down here. Now, you probably wouldn't fit comfortably, but I mean, I would have no problem with staying out here. But, you know, that's me. Got my Boxo Toolbox, Milwaukee 3 Ace Impact, because you never know what you're gonna run into. And I would just wanted to be prepared on this journey, especially since I'd never been through this pass and my first big journey on this boat. Here's a view of the outside of the boat. See, it's got the gray on the outside on the hole. Moving forward, I'll show you the cabin. Here's Monica and Luke. Say hey, hi. Hi. Bring it all the way forward. We got windless anchor on the front. And big cooler storage area under the seat, bunch of rod holders all the way around. These rod holders are kind of cool. It's a cup holder and a rod holder in one. So whether you're cruising with the fam or out fishing, you can, it's multi-purpose. Flir camera, the night vision's pretty sweet. Let me show you what that's about. If any of y'all been out boating much, you'll know that boats don't have headlights like cars do. So to replace that on this boat, we have a Flir night vision camera set up. This is during the day, however, at night, it's an incredible tool. You can see you can pan it around. Here's some of the buildings out off in the distance you can see. You can also change the color. So there's white, red, back to white. And this does all the way around. Kind of shows you right here the position of the camera if you're facing forward or if you're facing it to the left or to the right. All right, I'm gonna show you how to tie a rope to a cleat and then you're gonna do it, okay? okay? So this is how I do it. I come past the cleat and then you do a figure eight over it like that, okay? And then you can loop it back on itself like this. 
All right, did you see that? You did. Yeah, so do a figure eight over the top. Yep, just like that, do one more figure eight. Yep, now. Oh. No, you're right, you're right, yep. And now make a, make a circle like this. Pull backwards. Pull this line. Your slack back. Nope. Put that loop back on. You're stepping on the line. Oh. We got Snake Island here in Venice, and we're about to go out of the Venice jetty and then turn left to go south towards Naples. to Wiggins Pass and to our destination. The ride was pretty easy coming out of Venice Jetty. We were in about one to two foot seas. We were getting banged around a little bit. It wasn't the most comfortable ride, so that's why I was running at about 30 knots. I had the motors trimmed all the way down. For some reason with the weight of this boat and the power setup, having the motors trimmed down, which doesn't seem right, is most efficient. I tried trimming them up to gain speed, but in fact, it was slowing the boat down and making it less efficient. So I kept the motors trimmed all the way. I kept the bow down and we were able to plow through the two foot seas with you know great ease. As we got further south, things smoothed out. It was a lot more comfortable of a ride. In total, it took us four hours and eight minutes. And normally it would take us a lot shorter amount of time, especially considering that we traveled about 72 miles, averaging about 30 miles an hour. But when you factor in things like no wake zones and then getting fuel for 40 minutes, that's the reason why it took us four hours. And in fact, that was actually my guess before we'd even started the ride that it was gonna take us four hours. Coming into Wiggins Pass, I had never been through Wiggins Pass and especially in such a large boat like this, I called a local captain down here that I knew. He kind of gave me some pro tips for going through the pass because it's on temporary markers, temporary floating markers that is, because since it's so shallow, it tends to change a lot with the sand moving around on the bottom with different tides and storms that come through. He told me to hug the north side of the channel. So that's what I did hug the, the green markers because if you know anything about boating when you're coming through a channel and you're returning in on the west side of florida especially you always keep the red markers on your right so i was hugging the north side or the green markers and staying up on plane as long as i can because when i'm staying up on plane in such a heavy boat like this i'm drawing a lot less water by like at least a foot when the boat's idling and sitting down in the water it sits a lot further down and so if it was super shallow and without my experience of going through the channel I knew that I wanted to stay up on plane and so that's what I did uh, check out this amazing statistics this Garmin watch showed me I'm not sponsored by Garmin but they sent me this watch 
I mean, I guess it's a sponsorship, right? I don't really know. They sent me this watch and this the analytics on this are so neat. I mean, it factors in your time, your heart rate, temperature, the total distance I've traveled up and down. If you notice, it shows like 400 or 700 feet or something like that in total vertical distance traveled. And I would imagine that's the cumulative amount of feet I traveled vertically up and down over the waves throughout the entire trip. Like I said, it was a pretty smooth ride all the way down. If you guys like this content, let me know. I'm just kind of throwing it out there because it's something fun that I do and it's something that I enjoy doing. Make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll get back to the car content after this episode. As a fellow car guy, I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track. We're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. It's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only $39. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's basically the same thing as a Sonicare except a tenth of the price. So go get one. They send you a new brush out every three months so you don't have to worry about it. It's a great deal.